<sighs> okay, I think with me dropping this video, I'm gonna make a lot of tech influencers and social media marketers a bit mad, but it's okay. I'm not doing this video for them, I'm doing this video for you. Now, they're gonna charge you thousands of dollars for this information, I'm gonna give it to you for free. But I just wanna say this, this disclaimer, there are some individuals and some entities out there that have great exceptional programs and they truly wanna see you succeed and feel like they should be compensated for the time, which, you know, I think they should be compensated for the time. But there are individuals out there that is not doing that. They're more so are thinking about making a quick buck on you and trying to take advantage of the lack of knowledge that you have about this industry. There's no secret sauce on how you can get into this industry, but there are a set of qualities and steps that you should take to get into this industry. And we're gonna cover those in this video. But before we get into that, I'm gonna need you guys to subscribe and like this video so that other people can see this information and not spend thousands of dollars for this simple information. So let's be real for a second. Breaking into the tech industry should not require you to have to sell a kidney, mass out your credit cards, taking out loans, or even taking out second mortgages on your home. It's all about making smart choices and leveraging the resources that's available to you. So with that being said, let's dive into the video. Step one, embrace the power of self-education. You don't want to have to spend thousands of dollars to learn information that you can find on the internet for free or at an extremely affordable rate. You want to leverage platforms like YouTube, Udemy, Coursera, and many other platforms. Like till this day, I still use Udemy, I still use YouTube to expand my skill set. The biggest thing about the tech industry that people don't really like to tell you you're gonna to have to continuously learn in this industry if you wanna be good at anything. But there's one thing I do want to point out. If you are self-learning, self-studying, or doing something on your own, you wanna be aware of information overload. Information overload is basically you taking in way too much information and it gets to the point where you're discouraged and you feel like you're not learning anything. And the reason why people end up dealing with this type of fatigue is they're trying to learn way too many topics at one time. You have individuals that's probably trying to learn networking, programming, sys administration, or whatever it is that they're trying to learn. They're trying to group all of these things within one study plan and they, it makes them feel like I'm not learning anything, I don't get any of this information, and they just decide to quit because they don't know what information is the information they should actually be studying. You don't wanna do that. You wanna lock in on one topic, and that's it. Once you firmly understand that one topic, go on to the next topic. You do that for each topic until you can explain that particular topic to someone that has no understanding of that topic or the industry in itself. I always try to tell people, if you can explain this to someone as a five-year-old or someone that has no knowledge of this, then you understand the information. Step two, build a firm foundation. Get your hands dirty. Start that new coding project that you wanted to start. Start writing a blog about the coding project that you're doing. Contribute to open source projects. Create at-home labs. Oftentimes we get caught up in thinking how we look on paper when in reality we need to worry about the technical skills and the experience that we have for that particular thing that we want to do. Experience is always going to trump degrees and certifications. No matter how you look at it, it's going to always trump it. So don't get caught up in the mindset of saying, I need a degree, I need this certification. Because the matter of the fact is, you don't need those things. Now, they can be helpful, they can help you get through HR, they can, but it's not necessarily needed. I tend to say degrees and certification are kind of the same things, and when I say that, let me break down what I mean. When you're completing a degree, it doesn't necessarily mean you qualify to do the job, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna get a job, but it does show you have discipline and you are willing to learn. And that's the exact same thing when it comes to certification. It doesn't necessarily mean you're qualified to do this job. It doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get a job, but it does showcase that you are willing to learn. And that is definitely something that's gonna make you stand out in this industry. And honestly, 
you're going to always have to continue to learn. So you showcasing that ability can definitely help you within this industry. Step three, networking. It's not about what you know, it's about who you know. You need to be going to tech conferences, local meetups. You need to be joining online communities, joining Discord servers, having discussions with individuals that's in the industry that you want to be in. We're in the information age, guys. Like 20 years ago, people didn't have access to apps like Instagram and Twitter. Well, they might have, have. I'm not really sure, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. All you have to do is pick up your phone, go to Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, even Facebook, and ask someone a question that's in the industry. Hey man, I see that you're in this industry. I would love to ask you a question. Is that okay? Honestly, don't even do that. Just ask the question, but there is a caveat. You do not want to ask a question that someone can easily Google because nine out of 10, if it's an answer that can, if it's a question that can be Googled, a person like me, I'm not going to answer it because I'm going to feel like you're wasting my time because you didn't even take the effort out to Google and say, hey, how can I get to cybersecurity? You, you go ahead and type that into Google, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of different results telling you how to get into cybersecurity. When you're asking people questions, you want to ask them questions that's unique to their personal experience. You want to ask them questions like, hey, what made you choose cybersecurity over software engineer? Because then you're getting more detail into why they chose that career field, what's their outlook on that. And that's going to give you way more information versus, hey, how can I get in cybersecurity? You never know where your next opportunity is going to come, so you want to make sure you're networking with as many people as possible. I know you was probably looking for a quick fix solution to get into this industry, but I promise you, there's no quick fix, there's no easy way to get into this industry. You have to work, you have to grind to get into this industry, let alone make six figures. So don't let anyone on social media try to convince you that there's some secret way on how you can get into this industry. But with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, keep grinding and I hope you guys get to where you wanna be.